Funding for the 2011 World Food Prize has been provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, and by Newman Brothers, celebrating 100 years of building and restoring some of Iowa's finest buildings, congratulating Ambassador Quinn and the World Food Prize on the opening of the Norman E. Borlaug Hall of Laureates, and for 25 years of service to the world community. Newman Brothers, preserving your past, building your future. And by RDG Planning and Design, congratulating the World Food Prize on 25 years of service to the world community and the opening of the Dr. Norman E. Borlaug Hall of Laureates. RDG Planning and Design, dedicated to preserving Iowa's greatest architectural treasures. And by the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. Each day, 925 million people in the world suffer from hunger. Every 10 and a half seconds, a child under the age of five dies due to the effects of starvation. For those in need, the path to hunger relief is lined with hardworking and inventive people whose support is constant. Science, technology, and leadership are the proven keys to satisfying a universal appetite. Tonight, live from the Iowa Capitol in Des Moines, the 25th Annual World Food Prize honors those who've contributed to improving the quality and availability of food. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Johnson Boyle, high above the House of the Iowa Legislature here in Des Moines, live on Iowa Public Television. We are here tonight for the 25th anniversary of the World Food Prize Laureate Awards Ceremony. And tonight, two world leaders will be honored for their efforts to reduce extreme hunger and poverty in their countries. They joined a very prestigious list, and we're going to be telling you all about that in the time to come. For the next two hours, Iowa Public Television will have complete coverage of the World Food Prize, including all the pomp, circumstance, and the festivities that are taking place here tonight. Dignitaries from around the state, the country, and the world began to arrive at the Iowa State House and continue to arrive at the Iowa State House at this hour. And they are climbing the front steps, entering the the Hall of Laureates right now. And we are going right now to take a look at how the new home of the Iowa Food Prize came to be. In 2001, as the World Food Prize celebrated its 15th anniversary, an idea was born. Jean Rouen III, a Des Moines businessman whose family had been integral in supporting the prize and bringing it to Dr. Norman Borlaug's home state of Iowa, had a vision that would put the prize on the map and transform it into a landmark dedicated to the world's hunger fighters. On October 18, 2001, Jean Rouen III stepped onto the stage at the annual World Food Prize Laureate Award Ceremony, and he announced a tremendous gift. The World Food Prize that you created is a marvelous institution. So we think it needs to have a marvelous home. Uh, my father and I are extremely pleased to be here to announce that in conjunction with the Vision Iowa Fund, as a special gift to you, the Ruan family is committing $5 million towards the acquisition and refurbishment of the old Des Moines Public Library building so that it can become the future home of the World Food Prize. Architects designed the Des Moines Public Library building in the twilight of the 19th century. It stands on the western bank of the Des Moines River, on a site that housed an arsenal during the Civil War. This historic building was constructed as part of the City Beautiful Movement, a plan to place classical-style buildings and statues along the river to inspire citizens and enhance the landscape. The cornerstone was laid in 1900, and the library opened its doors in 1903. For over 100 years, it served as the center of learning and culture in Des Moines. The World Food Prize began discussions with the city of Des Moines, and World Food Prize President Ambassador Kenneth Quinn was asked to lead a fundraising campaign and to oversee the restoration of the building. 
architects were hired. Gensler and Herr Schaut of Chicago and RDG of Des Moines. On November 16, 2009, World Food Prize officials signed a 100-year lease with the city. Newman Brothers won the construction bid and work began on a $29.8 million project, which would take two years to complete. This monumental restoration project centered around two primary goals, preserving the historic integrity of the building and making it a model of energy efficiency. We're including numerous energy efficiency features into the building. For example, we have an 8,000 gallon cistern that will collect rainwater for reuse. We have 90 photovoltaic solar panels on the rooftop. We have 102 geothermal wells deep within the landscaped gardens, and these will provide heat into the building. So we're really designing the building to achieve LEED Platinum certification, and this is the highest level of energy efficiency. Frankly, there are really only a handful of historic buildings in the entire country to achieve this level of energy efficiency. In working toward historic preservation, all 10,000 panes of glass in the historic stained glass skylight were removed, cleaned, and repaired by local glass artisans. WPA murals telling a social history of Des Moines from the 1930s were fully restored in the lower level. And illustrating the challenge of meshing historic preservation with green building standards, the east staircase leading to the riverfront which deteriorated and was removed decades ago, was rebuilt. Due to LEED certification standards, architects couldn't go outside a 500-mile radius to locate building materials, and the original rock quarry had closed decades ago. So they sought out old railroad bridges in Minnesota, from which to harvest the stone, which was a perfect match. Outside, a magnificent garden will provide an inviting urban oasis of green in the middle of downtown. As guests enter the Hall of Laureates Rotunda, they pass under lunette murals that tell the story of Dr. Norman Borlaug, the father of the Green Revolution, of whom it is said he saved one billion lives with his innovations and commitment to agricultural improvements. These murals depict the four seasons of Dr. Borlaug's life, and featured on the grand staircase is a highlight of the building, a specially designed stained glass window depicting the critical role of agriculture in human history a farm family in classical times, bringing in their harvest. Continuing the Borlaug story, the former Stacks Room has become the Borlaug Ballroom, a tribute to the founder of the World Food Prize and his incredible achievements in feeding the world. Across the rotunda, the Ruan Laureate Room is dedicated to the memory of John Ruan Sr. and all of the World Food Prize laureates, from scientists to policymakers. All of those that have played a critical role in improving the quality, quantity, and availability of food in the world. A beautiful stained glass globe also teaches visitors about the origins of agriculture throughout history. Upstairs, a former art gallery has become the Iowa Gallery, a room that honors Iowa's humanitarians and agricultural heroes. People such as Herbert Hoover, Henry A. Wallace, George Washington Carver, and Jesse Field Schambaugh. The second floor also houses the Founders Boardroom and Exhibition Hall. In the lower level of the building, visitors can view a piece of American history through the WPA murals in the mural room. The restoration of this building has been a labor of love, a point of great pride for the leaders of the project. Going forward, the Hall of Laureates will serve as the home of the World Food Prize, known as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture and all of its programs. From the Borlaug Dialogue, drawing international experts each October to discuss cutting edge issues in global food security, to the Global Youth Institute, which aims to inspire the next generation to work in careers in combating hunger. The building will also be open to the public for tours, lectures, and other events. 
And as you just heard, the World Food Prize is often referred to as the Nobel Prize of Food and Agriculture, and organizers behind this brand new magnificent home for the World Food Prize Foundation feel like the place is fitting of that title. As uh, renovations at the new home were nearly complete, World Food Prize Foundation President Ambassador Kenneth Quinn gave us a behind the scenes look at how things came to be. Hi, I'm Ambassador Ken Quinn, President of the World Food Prize Foundation. Welcome to the new World Food Prize, Dr. Norman E. Borlaug, Hall of Laureates, here in the heart of Des Moines. We're standing here in front of the beautiful new public garden that we've created to help restore this building and make it a centerpiece of the principal river walk and an urban oasis in the heart of Des Moines. We are going to tell great stories here about Norman Borlaug, the father of the Green Revolution, the man from Iowa who saved more lives than anyone who's ever lived, and about John Ruan, the Des Moines philanthropist who saved the World Food Prize when it was about to go out of existence. Their statues are here in the garden, along with this beautiful fountain and a map of the world, which is, after all, our first name, World Food Prize. So I'm so glad that you're here and we're able to tell you these stories. Well, we're inside the building now and here on the mezzanine of the magnificent rotunda of the century old building. And please excuse that noise that you hear. We're still in the final stages of work being done. As you'll be able to see, we have lovingly restored this building. We've preserved all of the architectural elements, some that were damaged over the last 100 plus years. We've repaired. They have all of this wonderful gold leaf on them and the building is just going to shine as though it were brand new. And we've added a number of wonderful artistic and architectural and sculptural elements to the building to tell those stories uh, that we want to convey to people coming in. Here's a stained glass window with a scene from classical times of a family bringing in the harvest. This tells the story of how food and agriculture has been at the heart of human existence from the beginning of time. And that stained glass window was inspired by a Christian Peterson sculpture I came across up at Iowa State. And we took it, uh, went to an Afghani artist uh, who translated into a painting, and then to the Gabriel Meyer studio in Munich. They've been making stained glass since 1847, some of which are in churches and buildings around Iowa. And they made this magnificent creation that's at the center of the building, 20 feet high at the top of the grand staircase. And then we've added, in each of the four corners, what we call grain or crop sculptures that represent the four crops that have fed mankind since the beginning of time. Soy, wheat, uh, rice, and corn. And they're also part of that story. And then up in the lunettes, you'll see that we have four paintings which track Dr. Borlaug's life according to the time of day. Here's a scene of Iowa at dawn, where he's born, up in Howard County and raised on that farm. And there's Mexico at high noon, where he went and made his incredible breakthrough achievement in developing miracle wheat, triple the yield and disease resistant. And then there's South Asia, India, Pakistan, where he takes his new wheat and staves off a massive famine where hundreds of millions might have died. And finally, Africa at twilight. At the end of his life, Norman Borlaug brought the struggle to bring adequate food and nutrition to that last part of the world that had not benefited from the Green Revolution. These are wonderful stories. But we have some other stories. And I'd like you to come with me now as we go to the Iowa Gallery. Well, we're here in the Iowa Gallery. This is the original art gallery when the building was first uh, designed at the end of the 19th century and it was a place when art was displayed there and we preserved it pretty much the way it was, the same type of wall covering. But what's new is all of the artworks that are in here. Art that tells the story of Iowa's great agricultural and humanitarian heritage about how Iowans have been involved in amazing efforts to feed the world. Uh, the centerpiece is a mural by Gary Kelly and it shows uh, four of Iowa's great heroes, Herbert Hoover, Henry A. Wallace, George Washington Carver, Jesse Field Shambaugh, the woman who, from Clorinda who started 4-H clubs, and they're all sitting on Norman Borlaug's front porch. 
uh, how, what an appropriate uh, gathering and grouping that is. And then we turn to 16 other artists who produce uh, works. Uh, there's a wonderful piece by Rose Franson from Maquoketa that's called Iowa Shares. And it depicts the story of how Governor Robert Ray uh, brought Indo-Chinese refugees from Southeast Asia to Iowa to be resettled. And then when there were starving Cambodians, took Iowa food and medicine and doctors and nurses there to sustain life. There's another painting by Peter Thompson from Iowa City of Herbert Hoover leading the effort to feed Europe. Eight, nine hundred million people were fed and saved by Hoover's efforts while he was working for a Democrat. Woodrow Wilson was present at the time. And then there are paintings of uh, Henry Wallace and George Washington Carver. There's the Yamanashi hog lift when in 1959 uh, Iowans sent hogs and corn to devastated uh, Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan that had been hit so hard by a typhoon and rebuilt the uh, pork industry there. There's uh, other pieces around the room. Uh, Mary Klein Misol's depiction of George Washington Carver and writing to Mahatma Gandhi. Who knew that an Iowan was, played such an important role in India's struggle for independence? Uh, there, there are depictions of the Iowans who have been Secretary of Agriculture. There's one about the Pope's visit, uh, Khrushchev and, uh, visiting Garst's farm in uh, 1959, beginning the thaw of the Cold War, how food and agriculture and how Iowa could be at the heart of keeping our planet from uh, descending to nuclear war. All of these great stories all deserve to be preserved and that's why we did this. That's why we have this Iowa gallery, so that every person who comes in, every Iowan who comes in, will know what a great state we have and what a wonderful uh, history we have, what a wonderful legacy that has been left to us. And it's why Iowa should be known as the hunger-fighting capital of the world. We started 10 years ago with a vision that John Ruan III had that it could be the home of the World Food Prize. Janice Ruan has played such a wonderful part in bringing the decor and the furniture and the look and the garden to it. And we've, thanks to all of our donors who have given us more than $30 million to do this. It's gonna be a great asset for our community, a great beacon to tell the world what a great place Iowa is. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the Hall of Laureates, and we want to invite you back. Uh, the building's going to be uh, open to the public, free of charge, to come in and see for yourself all of these wonderful artwork and sculpture and features and see our amazing stories. And, you know, when we began the tour, we were at uh, the back door out with the garden, and we've rebuilt the historic uh, entrance on the east front by the Des Moines River. And so when you come back, uh, that'll be the way that you'll come into the building and uh, come in and see the grandeur that the architects inspired uh, in the 19th century and how we preserved it here in the 21st century. And I've signed a 100-year lease, so at the beginning of the 22nd century, this building will still be inspiring great things in terms of fighting hunger and conquering poverty and uplifting people around the world, which is, after all, Iowa's great tradition. Funding for the 2011 World Food Prize has been provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation, and by Newman Brothers, celebrating 100 years of building and restoring some of Iowa's finest buildings, congratulating Ambassador Quinn and the World Food Prize on the opening of the Norman E. Borlaug Hall of Laureates, and for 25 years of service to the world community. Newman Brothers, preserving your past, building your future. And by RDG Planning and Design, congratulating the World Food Prize on 25 years of service to the world community and the opening of the Dr. Norman E. Borlaug Hall of Laureates. RDG Planning and Design, dedicated to preserving Iowa's greatest architectural treasures. And by the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust. 
And welcome back to the Iowa State House live in downtown Des Moines, where we are just a little over 10 minutes away from the start of the 2011 World Food Prize Laureate Award Ceremony. You saw earlier the new magnificent home of the World Food Prize Foundation, appropriately called the Norman E. Borlaug Laureates Hall. And uh, behind me, you can see the people who are gathered here on the house floor, uh, about 800 people strong here tonight to celebrate the newest laureates of the World Food Prize. Now, earlier tonight, we told you that uh, many people were arriving from around the state, around the country, all around the world here at the Iowa State House, coming up the front steps. And uh, you can see the festivities right now as people arrived on this beautiful fall day here in Des Moines, a little windy, uh, greeted by music, greeted by hugs and kisses. Lots of fans coming out to, uh, to see. There's John Ruan coming up the stairs. Lots of people here to see the newest laureates inducted into their Hall of Fame tonight, and that's Ambassador Kenneth Quinn in the glasses there uh, with his wife. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, with one of the honorees this year. The former president of Brazil will be honored here tonight, along with the former president of Ghana. There you can see the red carpet as people arrive here, and the excitement is truly building, and it's an electric atmosphere. A little bit of uh, Hollywood, a little bit of the agricultural world, a little bit of, oh, I don't know, politics. Uh, people from all over the world, some 75 nations have been represented here in Des Moines this week, taking part in symposiums, events, and of course, the Laureate Award Ceremony tonight. 1,400 people have come to downtown Des Moines, truly making this the world hub of conversation about poverty and hunger and ways to end extreme poverty and hunger. The uh, World Food Prize has aimed to make Des Moines the center of world conversations about agriculture and food and feeding the hungry. And uh, we are certainly doing that this week and tonight here in downtown Des Moines. Now, 25 years ago, a Dr. Uh, M.S. Swami Nathan was the very first winner of the World Food Prize. He was known then as the father of the Green Revolution in India. And now, of course, he is chairman of the World Food Prize Laureate Selection Committee. We talked to him earlier about how things have changed over the past 25 years. Well, the last 25 years have seen both ups and downs as far as food security is concerned. In the, soon after the so-called Green Revolution uh, triggered by Norman Borlaug, we were all very confident that the food problem and hunger will be become problems of the past. On the other hand, at the end of 25 years, I'm sorry to say, uh, the number of hungry has grown, nearly a billion people now, and uh, many new problems have come. For example, the growing population, the diversion of prime farmland for non-farm purposes, the growing problem of water insecurity for irrigation purposes, and above all, the threat of climate change and the new difficulties which may arise from uncertain monsoons, uncertain rainfall, uh, maybe higher sea level, sea level rise. So a whole set of problems called the broadly grouped under what we call climate change. They have all become threats to sustainable food security. So we were confident 25 years ago when I received the first World Food Prize that uh, we can overcome, but we'll still overcome. But uh, nevertheless, the problems have become quite daunting. Well, the last 25 years have seen great changes in India in my own country. Uh, for example, we have leapfrogged in certain areas of technology, like information technology, space technology, and so on. It has brought new prosperity and new opportunities for employment in urban areas. But in rural, in rural India, where nearly 70% of our 1.2 billion population live, agriculture is the main source of livelihoods of income. And uh, agricultural growth has not kept pace uh, unlike urban growth in terms of economic growth. So we find the contribution of agriculture to total GDP is coming down, but the number of people dependent on agriculture is growing. In other words, then, there is increasing rural poverty. And this is why many times we find India has large grain reserves and grain stocks, but nevertheless, a very large number of children, women, and men go to bed hungry. This is our greatest challenge in India, uh, food security for all uh, is the major challenge. Today we find uh, the problems in agriculture are about two or three major kinds. 
One is the foundation, the environmental foundations of agriculture, like soil, water, biodiversity, and climate. They are getting more and more adversely impacted by so-called modern growth, modern civilization. And unless these are the foundations for sustainable production, and if the soil fertility goes down, if water quality goes down, food safety goes down, and biodiversity gets diminished, what we call genetic erosion, then all these will cause problem, compounding it to the climate change problem. The second important problem is one of connect with the energy supply, because the cost of inputs, the inputs are needed for output. For example, fertilizer, pesticide, all of them have petroleum products as a feedstock. Now, those prices are very, very volatile, very, very volatile. In 2008, suddenly the prices went up very high. As a result, the prices of all food commodities went up, what we call price volatility, cost by energy costs, the input costs, the economics of farming, as you will say, and also the supply-demand equation. And thirdly, we find that uh, agriculture alone will not be able to give the income which the farmers require. I am talking about small farmers, small holdings of five acres, two hectares and below. Uh, for them, you require also non-farm employment, non-farm income, additional bio processing of food, value addition to primary products. Uh, that kind of um, looking at uh, multiple sources of income to a rural family, which is necessary to insulate that family uh, from hunger or from income uncertainty. So we need now a new strategy for agriculture, uh, what I have called evergreen revolution, or uh, increasing productivity in perpetuity without environmental harm of the kind Rachel Carson warned long ago in the early 60s. That is our great challenge today. New technologies are needed. And uh, this is where I think there is also a, a little bit of uh, concern about new technologies among public mind, whether it's biotechnology, whether it's nanotechnology, where it is, uh, and so uh, we need to ensure that the technological transfer